We live in a fertile land, a land of goodly crops, of fragrant flowers, of sturdy animals. Fertility is the basis of our national life, the new life that comes unfailingly every year, the new life that is a never-ending miracle. More than 4,000 years ago, the ancient Celts practiced in Britain a form of fertility worship, which went on for centuries. Not surprising. If the gods weren't pleased, the people starved or died out. And even today, in many parts of the country, the old fertility customs are still kept up, even though the old superstitions are dead. At Padstow in Cornwall, every year on May Day, the hobby horse custom is danced, and most of its 3,000 people turn out for the celebration. The hobby horse, symbolic of life triumphing over death, begins his dance round the maypole with his traditional followers and musicians. They sing and they dance, and the whole town dances and sings with them. They dance through the town and they dance into people's homes. They repeat again and again the story of new life and the more they dance, the more fervent they become. They dance in the streets and down on the harbour and they sing, even in the rain. Nearly 300 miles away in the heart of London, is the headquarters of a society, one of whose objects is to keep alive the old fertility customs. Cecil Sharp House is the centre to which hundreds of people from all over the world come to learn about English traditions and to see some of Britain's dances. The English Folk Dance and Song Society, which has been celebrating its golden jubilee, has gathered together an immense library of books, music and knowledge of folklore from every part of the country. Director Douglas Kennedy and his staff are continually looking for evidence of the origins of national folk dances and music and are always finding new exhibits for their collections of mumming and Morris dolls. For Morris dancing is another fertility custom. There are over a thousand serious Morris dancers in England who perform publicly from May Day to Midsummer. Outside St Paul's Cathedral are some of London's Morris dancers. The bows of London City, as they call themselves, are dancing with the hobby horse and the fool, with the traditional music and the colourful costumes. Tutty men of Hungerford in Berkshire go one better. Every hocktide, that's just after Easter, the chosen Tutty men are allowed to kiss as many girls as they can in one day. They carry staves of flowers and they reckon a girl as anything between eight and eighty. Based on an ancient fertility rite, this ceremony is connected with the annual court, which regulates the freedoms and land given to the people of Hungerford by John of Gaunt in the 14th century, before the days of lipstick, of course. But at Helston, in Cornwall, they are more formal when the town turns out for its annual furry dance. It's also known as the Flora Dance, and Flora was the goddess of fertility. Here, too, they don't let rain damp their ardour. From early morning they dance, a celebration of the awakening of spring with all its fruits and new life. 